it just we we generally record conversations, obviously, partially for notes for ourselves, partially for us, so other people can consume discussions that have happened. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I I love that approach. I think it's really, I mean, it's weird in a really good way. Uh, I, I, it's kind of it's kind of like from the future in a way. I do believe in that. It's like radical transparency, and and, and your organization is kind of living and breathing that. So. It's weird, but yeah, you just kind of get used to it in some ways. Yeah. You just kind of go, yep, everything, well, nearly everything's recorded. I mean, some of the teams don't record every call, something right. we, but we, we try and do it as much as we can, especially when it's like organize I try and do it when it's organizational conversations rather than yeah. like specifics of a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself and, and Matt and more. Sure. Uh, yeah, where do, we, where do I start? So. So maybe uh, like the, n not that short, shorter story. So kind of my, my background is in, well, it's kind of like in engineering. So I studied uh, strategy and applied mathematics. Mm -hmm. I've been working for the past 10 years with, uh, well, you could say like growth. So, so I've, been, I've been an entrepreneur uh, before. I've been uh, a consultant for different growth companies. I, I led a like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, growth company accelerator for mid-sized companies here in Finland. So I'm, I'm based in Helsinki. And, uh, and yeah, I guess, I guess like a couple of years ago, I started to have this kind of a, like, a, like an inkling that, that maybe I've been, it wasn't like a Eureka moment. It was more like maybe, like maybe I've been solving bullshit problems all along and maybe I should actually do something with real my problems. life that, that yeah solve real problems and actually make an impact and not just an impact on bottom line i mean yeah. growth is growth isn't bad uh it, it's but it's it's uh it's neutral i mean it, it creates value but not in an optimal way and, and kind of solve actually the big problems of the world we we need uh much much more narrow focus than just like the general capitalistic value creation right yeah yeah okay so um Matamor, and um, when did when did Matamor as a project start? So, so we started we started this uh, with my co-founder so Andreas. So, seen it started around environmental impact originally. Yeah, at least it's, yeah, which yeah, is something so, and I'm passionate about as well. Even though oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've been yeah, in the green cool. by for five years, so I'd like to think I'm pretty politically cool. green. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like uh, I I started. I mean, I started there like a. Like a little bit of a year ago, I started just listing different uh, problems. Um, Big problems rather so than yeah, little to, problems. To, yeah, exactly, exactly. To Google Sheet and kind of climate change came on top. It, it's like it's like interconnected in all these different ways. I mean, even to COVID, it's, uh, we wouldn't probably have this virus without us pushing the natural borders. Absolutely. Uh, all the, the actual, the, the pushing the um, the impact on the ecological impact. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. we won't be bumping into bats if we want trying to expand into every square inch of the earth. <laughs> exactly, with, with exactly. And, uh, and, and that was kind of, that's when I kind of started talking with, um, with my co-founder that, that I, I had, I had found a project drawdown, which is, uh, this like a uh, hundred different solutions that we need to implement to reverse climate change. And I was like, excellent. Somebody's done the groundwork. So who's actually working on these solutions? And it, it turned out to be a really hard, hard thing to do. So I kind of just like pick, pick the number one solution and then start Googling different projects and organizations working on it. Not that easy. And that was kind of the, the, the first spark to uh, matter more like let's build a platform where people can find opportunities to reverse climate change. And, and kind of we prototyped and piloted a lot during uh, fall. And we've also learned a lot and it's, it, we're actually not anymore like focusing fully on like, uh, work opportunities, but it's more about let's help projects working on these important things be transparent about what they are working on, what they need. I mean, it could be it could be uh, a volunteer role that needs to be filled, or it could be data, or it could be technology, or an idea, or whatever. And let's just help projects become as transparent as possible, also to the outside world. And 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 we believe that that will increase 
the amount of uh, unobvious, interesting connections between different people, projects that we actually absolutely need to solve these complex problems that we kind of need to poke around from different sides to different to silos and different yeah, exactly. different yeah, it's pulling people from different places that have yes. five different points of view that can all teach each other about each other's point of view and that oh, will hopefully exactly. Inf exactly inform a better way of looking at it yeah, it's definitely something i'm obviously corona y stands for and yes. it's something that i've been um I, I have personally been consuming information from many different pools of, of knowledge because I'm yeah. not a specialist. We have lots and lots of specialists in Corona Y. I am the antithesis of a specialist. I, you know, I read history, I read economics, I read sociology and psychology, I read physics and healthcare, and I just I read on everything and, and every, everywhere. And technology is a passionate thing that I'm interested in, but I also think technology is going to be the bridge that holds the solution. It's not going to be the solution, yeah. but it will facilitate a solution Ab and we need to, absolutely it's going to be um it's going to be people people's ingenuity and possibility is going to do it and the problem is um yes too many people are too focused on just the economics and hoping if we just make the correct carrots you know the economic carrots then then the problems will be solved right. and there is some truth to that approach mm -hmm. But it's not the whole, just like you said, it's not the whole picture. It's not the, it's not the yeah, only solution because there's so much more to the economy than financial creation. You know, there's so much of yeah. the economy that's, that's shared. There's so much of the economy that's invisible on the GDP sense. You know, yeah, exactly. people, who care, people who care for people, people who work in voluntary sectors. But oh, there's yeah. loads of the economy that exists and it's not financially visible, but it, it is massively impactful. And it's about trying to leverage the financial impact and support the non-obvious financial stuff to do, you know, to mm. make the social changes, to make the, to make the systemic and social changes and to connect people from different disciplines and different places. Um, how is, uh, on a completely different note, how is Matter More funded currently? Uh, Self-funded. Um, so we are... I mean, me and my co-founder, we've been, uh, we hope at some point that we can turn this into a, a for-profit company. But right now, what we want to do is figure out a way to make a big impact on, on COVID and then more broadly, perhaps like planetary health at some point. And, uh, and once we figure out a way to do that, then, it's a, then we need to figure out uh, where, the business model. Uh, I've got to say, where, where do you see the business model in that sense? If you, if you identify that you wish yeah. it to be a profit making system yeah. how where would you find profit in that and, uh, and, which, so, and how is the profit how is the profit yeah, viable yeah, and also in line with your morals how is it how are they right. two to kick because uh, okay. i'm not against profit as a, as a principal no, i understand that yeah. everyone's got to pay bills i understand that yeah so it's yeah. balancing out there, there's definitely a balance uh well first of all well, if we look at the business model part uh how we say it is that like companies pay. So, so what we, what we are thinking about right now is that we would have something similar to a model that LinkedIn has. So like a freemium plus some additional features, uh, that, that would operate as a kind of a on subscription basis. Uh, the one kind of another model that we've been thinking about is like, a this, like a, bounty slash referral fee type of a thing. So someone could like share a, okay, I need this, I need this contact or connection, or I need, I need to get this done. And uh, if somebody can help me find the person who can do it, they'll get a share of that bounty or, or something like that. So th I think those are kind of the two main models that we've been thinking about. Um, and, uh, and kind of how that ties into like the, let's say the bigger picture and purpose. I, I do believe, I mean, when, when we started, started out building this thing, we uh, discussed this a lot. And I think like um, profit, I mean, to, we want to make a really uh, big dent on, on uh, how things are working right now. And, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen many successful models because we want to build this type of like a, bit like a consumer consumerish uh, product in terms of like how it feels and so forth and and 
we haven't seen kind of any examples of those uh, products that have actually really made it big that have been built on like a open source basis. So, so I think there's kind of the conflict that we saw early on and, and we thought that, that by figuring out a way to make an actual profit model, uh, we can, we can uh, succeed in scaling this up to the levels that we want. Um, so, I mean, I think it's more like a, it's a matter of, matter of aligning profit and impact. That's the difficult challenge. And we're not, I mean, we haven't even figured out the financial model yet uh, and we need to connect that with the impact model or otherwise we'll, I know that we will kind of steer away from the impact at some point and then. Yeah, then that's kind definitely, of a, yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons I had a question is because I have seen, you know, I, I had a quick look around Matamor a few weeks ago. I had a look what you're doing. I could see on the, I think I, I could see at that point, I could see the job board. It looks like you might have changed things around a little bit now. So I can't see that now. I don't think I signed up. I don't yeah. think I did. Um, I had a look around and saw that like the job board, so, you know, it's like a job board or a project board type system. And I understand, but it was a case of um, Corona Wire has a very like specific ethos. Mm-hmm even though it's hard to sort of com- explain, especially as an individual, because no individual can ever fully represent the collective that is Corona Y. Yeah. But the way, the way I see it and the way I interpret it is um, we're about building a system and a platform in much the same way you're on about building a platform. Mm-hmm. But our platform is the idea behind the platform is it's open, transparent, sustainable, and reproducible. In mm-hmm. the sense that people could use the same kind of approach that we do, or join us and help us with the same, you know, bring bring the problems to us, and we can then help facilitate right. connection. So that's kind of the way we look at. I look at Corona White as the person oh. who's who's mostly managing the community in that sense. Um, and my my rub is, and our discussion we've discussed this a lot about the difference between you know the the monetary system and the and the economics of it and the business. And yes, I would like personally to be able to do this as my job and get paid for it. It would be nice because I'm spending that much time on it anyway. I'd like to be able to not have to worry about how I'm going to pay for my bills, you know, at the same time. But um, no matter which way. Um, my experience is no matter which way a, an organization starts to build, if there is a profit motive, if the profit motive is an individualized profit motive, um, eventually the impact will be affected by the profit motive. And the profit motive can exist to make sure it, the organization continues to do the good work it's doing. Yep. And I understand that, but my experience is no matter how good the intentions are, the profit motive will eat, will always eat the impact motive, unless the impact motive is the only motive, which is why we're looking at a non-profit model. Mm -hmm. We're looking at non-profit models, we're looking at non-profit organizations. I'm personally in favor for um, a cooperative, a cooperative non-profit model in the sense that everyone who is part of the collective is also an owner of the collective and and that way no no one person could be extracting for lack of a better word it's because the last thing i want is a system where everyone's there's so many people putting free time and energy into it and someone else is making more gains than they're putting in that's not how i i see it and i'm not we've not worked out how the hell that's going to work like the business Mm as a business, as an organization, how to make that a sustainable entity, we're experimenting right now. We know this is one big flash organizational, non-unmanaged collective cooperative experiment. Yeah. It's just, there's so much like, and I think part of it is because there are a number of us who don't want to be the owner or the the manager or the director or any of them things because there's lots of negative, co- I see lots of negative connotations. Don't get me wrong, it'd be nice to have like founder next to my name or director. You know, it's, everyone likes the idea of that title and that and that yeah. social status that comes with yeah, it. The recognition. The recognition, because that's one thing that I've, you know, I've, I've contributed to lots of things over the years in lots of different places and never really got the recognition and it is a frustration. Mm, yeah. But 
Um, but at the same time, there's toxicity in that chase for status and recognition. And, yeah. and it's a real, it is a real rub. Like you said, you know, we can't, there is a, a sustainability question in something that can't, you know, that has, that completely devolves the pure profit mo making motive. And there is also, like you said, questions around um, when, when is impact going to be affected by the profit motive? Mm -hmm. Neither one of them has a perfect solution. They're both, yeah. they're both got good intentions. And where, where do we find that middle ground? And the, um, uh, the way I see Matamor is basically just as um, the way I'm, the one thing I'm worried about is it, it will just subsume Corona Y. It just basically eat it because the only thing we have as a collective right now is the fact that we're a collective. And if something else is hosting that collective work, that collective no longer is an individual. I understand. Yeah. And it just yeah. becomes the bigger. And, and, I, and, and, there, and there is like a real personal, there's like a real like dyad for me in there in the sense that I am absolutely pro bigger community, more people, more inclusion, more people represented a bigger community is better because the mm -hmm. bigger community is going to have more experts with more points of view, with more perspectives, with more influence, closer to a democratic system. That is something that I think is really good. But I understand the problem with scale as well. Eventually, a community is no longer a community that works at scale. I mean, I ran a, an online group for music producers for the last 10 years, and it went from 500 to 23,000. And 500 wow. is... And 500 is is a is a is an event. You can talk. You can you can hang around with 500 people, and yeah, it'd be busy. And you struggle to talk to everyone. But you'd yeah. by proxy probably know everyone in some form or yeah. another. Yeah. You can't. Once it gets past a certain point, it's no longer a village, and then yeah. it's no longer yeah. a town. Yeah. And then you can't. And then no. And then you can no longer know everyone. Not even by proxy. There could be whole communities of people over in that corner that you've never met. You don't even know what they do, and there's. And that's something that rubs against the sort of social system. It's one of the problems with the planet. Right. It's, one of the, it's one of the reasons why someone in Britain can go, oh, well, why should I worry about this tiny little island in yeah. the Pacific that might disappear? Yeah. Because it's just, it's far away. It's alien. It's different. I can't, I don't identify with anything they identify with. So it's not me. It's the, it's the inherent selfishness of the way the human being is being built. You know, we worry about... Mm -hmm what's close to us and what involves us and our tribe and everything else. It's not intentional. You can be as egalitarian as you try to be. I try and make a point of looking at the perspective of the world a lot more. I look at people on the planet and they're like, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all humans. Absolutely. Don't, don't matter where you come yeah. from, but we're all still different and individuals. And that's the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's, yeah. No, I, I completely get it. And I, I, I agree. Um, Oh my, my, a lot, a lot of different thoughts <laughs> there. Um, yeah. may, may, maybe I'll start with a kind of the last one, uh, the last point that you, you said there, uh, which was about kind of a, us, uh, somehow, I, I guess like interfering or like, I don't know what, what word you use subsuming or subsume like as yeah, in exactly. con, con, consume, but yeah, exactly. But subsume yeah. is to be a, a big, a smaller part of a bigger thing and this individualism. Yeah. And, and kind of a, how, how we see ourselves is that um, it's like, I mean, for example, like Slack has this slogan, like uh, Slack is the place where work happens. Mm -hmm. and, and, and kind of for matter more, kind of we don't want to be the place where work happens. We don't want to be the place where projects uh, discuss different things and kind of work on different issues. We want to be the place where people find what's going on in the world, what's going on in Corona Y and what's going on maybe broadly in, in, uh, in the uh, COVID landscape and, and what do, do these teams or teams of teams, what do they need to, to uh, make, uh, make an impact? And kind of, we want to be the kind of the, it's like, it's like the door uh, to the community, but we don't want to kind of, we don't want to form a community. We don't want to build a community. We want to build a tool. And that this is what we've been uh, discussing with, uh, for example, like helpful engineering as well. It's like, like we want to help them do great work, but we want to help them solve these different challenges uh, 
regarding uh, them not having a good enough understanding of uh, kind of what's happening in, in these different projects and what, what do these projects need? I mean, they are doing a lot of work within the project in different Slack channels, but then kind of the, the bigger issues, the bigger bottlenecks that they need to solve and where the, like the central help yeah. and support organization could help. What do, how, how could they help? What do they need? How could we, how could they reach yeah, out this, to the right people? These and, are, and these, this is, this yeah. is a question. This is a question we obviously in Corona Y bumping into a lot in the sense that, I mean, I've described it as a knowledge management problem. It's a problem with knowledge it management. Is. It and is. it's not, it's a problem with knowledge management in an organization where there is no, um, there's no inkling to do the boring knowledge management because it's, it's more fun to build a thing than write down the thing that you built. Yeah. It just yeah. is fundamentally the, the end of the day, we've got a lot of engineers and we've got a lot of people who, who are engineering minded and engineers are great at building stuff. Give them a problem, give them a set of tools, give them some materials that run off and build it. They might run off and build the right thing. They might run off and build the wrong thing. They might build, but they'll build because that's what they're interested in doing. They yeah. enjoy the yeah. process of solving the problems and building the thing. But the person who built the thing isn't always good at describing how they built it, how it works and what it will do. Sometimes they can explain it to someone who's te as technical as them, mm -hmm. but they will not be the best person to communicate it to someone who isn't as technical as them. Mm -hmm. This is where my space lives. I'm technical enough to understand technical, but I'm not, uh, but I've learned how to communicate the technical to the non-technical or the design to the, you know, the design problems to a technical person or like a, it's like it's a mixture of education and psychology and yeah. having a weird brain and mm -hmm. being interested in many things. So it is a knowledge management problem and it's a, it's a knowledge management problem in the sense that we want to try and make as much intrinsic information extrinsic. We want to make as much stuff that's people in stuck in people's heads in the back of the mind in the, well, I just know these things into concrete readable, consumable information and make that as accurate and useful and up to date as possible. It is a knowledge management problem. Mm -hmm. But the problem with it being like that is um, how do we make people do the boring documentation? How do we get people to do that? And that's going to be, the, I'm telling you now, that's going to be the rub of what you're going to bump in. So that's going to be the problem you'll see in the future. What will be the problem of finding people who are interested to do something? Uh, you, you can, the problem is going to be finding people who can be bothered writing it down. Yeah. It's as yeah. simple as that. And it is, it's as simple as that. And it goes back to that asynchronous um, knowledge management communication problem. And there are plenty of tools out there, but the bigger the organization, the more information's going in, which means it needs more people who are curating the knowledge that's there. Yep. Look, at Wiki yep. look at Wikipedia. I mean, Wikipedia is a prime example of a, a managed massive pool of knowledge that has to be curated and edited yeah. collectively, an amazing human recreation through collective intelligence. But how do you promote collective knowledge management in a space where we really want engineers to build things? And yeah. how do you get the people who are interested in knowledge management to hang out when all they're really going to be doing is curating information right. and how do you do that how do you do that without a financial incentive yeah that's yeah. the that's the real rub is like end of day knowledge management is an entire subsection of business it's like how organizations remember things how organizations have long-term memories and, that, and 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 it is an entire like discipline you know library sciences information technology we, and, and it is a, a whole discipline and they're paid well they're paid well for being good at understanding how to solve problems in knowledge management. How do we get that sort of level of skill and ability and policy, uh, you know, policy principles into an organization where this, the only thing that you can do is like, well done. You did a really good job. Thank you very much. Right. Um, it's yeah. like, I, yeah. I've got no yeah. more, I've got yeah. enough. Yeah. It's, so uh, that's kind of, that is definitely a rub that I understand. And that's something you're going to bump into. And it's definitely something we're bumping into. And, it, and, and it's exhausting. It's exhausting to try and understand an organization that's constantly moving. But it is also super interesting to watch what people yeah. make. When It's yeah. really interesting to see what people make when the only thing they want to do is try and make, solve a problem. Rather than like, yeah. 
get paid. It's that all that intrinsic motivations are there. It's great to see intrinsic motivations being the absolute epitome of the driving force behind people. But like I've said earlier on, I'd like to pay my bills still. <laughs> and I yeah. understand every, yeah. in this yeah. current system, we've all got to pay us bills as well. So yeah. we have to work out a way of doing that. And I understand yeah, your for, method. For, your uh, and your I method mean, is, I, I, I see. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean for the, for the long-term health of Corona, why you definitely need to figure, figure that one out. And I think like the, probably the critical, I mean, like ideally uh, it would probably like work something like uh, Bitcoin. Everybody would just like uh, uh, contribute have, to a ledger it, and then, it, and then it, get we, paid. It has, we have to have one of the guys, Derek is, um, He's experienced in Bitcoin technology and like infrastructure and that sort of stuff. And and, and I actually and it has been dis- it has been, been like mildly discussed on the edge. Oh. And I actually sort of see because that's one thing. I, I'm again I'm not I'm not an expert in anything, but I am a technology nerd and I enjoy learning about especially new technologies like um, like blockchain technology and that sort of stuff. And I do see but blockchain t- technology having a, an amazing decentralizing power to be able to show the work done. Again, how the hell we would make blockchain work in an environment where the only thing we can definitely know someone's done it is the collective work is done and yeah, exactly. we have to have, the, the, do we have to have five people, do we have to, is super hard. Yeah. 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 How do we, you know, we have to have five people take off saying you've done three pieces of work. I don't know. How do we even yeah. quantify that? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> how, do, how do you even quantify the work I do when most of mine is discussing and occasionally just talking and yeah. reading, reading yeah. just large amounts of information and trying to work out what everyone's doing. That's pretty much most of my job. And, I, and I'm like, how do you quantify that? And I'm like, I don't even know why I quantify it. And I'm regularly going, I'm not even contributing anything. And then someone has a discussion with me and I go like, oh, well, this, 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 this. And, and, I, and I'll explain like nine different parts of Corona wine and like, all right, actually, I am doing something. I just don't realize it because I'm just consuming. Right, right. yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, one, one I think, interesting example, uh, I don't know if you know Hyder, uh, or Hi, Hyder or Hyder, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a Chinese, uh, like, electronics manufacturer company, but they have organized themselves. I mean, it's like, a, it's like, I mean, they have tens of thousands of people and they've organized themselves into these small micro enterprises, which buy and sell services from each other. And it's uh, super agile and it actually works, which is really interesting. And, and yeah, it, Sem- uh, Semco works so, in a similar sort of way in a, yeah. a Brazilian, Brazilian company. They started as a big company with lots of sales and then, right. they, and then they broke up the company in the sense that um, the company would have like self-governing teams and the, and the teams would manage themselves semi-autonomously and if a particular and if a particular part of the company was doing really well if they wanted to spin off as a separate company they were allowed to spin off as a separate company and were given funding to support them in that initial branch over and they would sell them the like the hardware that they were using and all this sort of stuff and then they might and then they might build a small enterprise and then semco would be their first customer buying the thing that they were making anyway and doing it well and it's it's an interesting way of empowering and promoting enterprise and again i'm not against enterprise it's absolutely necessary I'm, i'm I'm very good at crit- critiquing capitalism and enterprise because of its abusive, destructive yeah. height. It's because it's because it's obsessed with um, growth at no end, and yeah. there is an end. No matter mm-hmm. which way you look at it, there is you just you leave the planet eventually. Otherwise, you know we're already eating the planet. We can't eat at a faster rate and expect it to live longer. Yes, I understand some things are not um, resource intensive, and other things that are, yeah you can cre- you can create you can create wealth from information which is obviously consuming very little of the planet and producing lots of lots of use but um but i feel like there's still limits to that there's still limits of how much you can monetize information in, in a world where information is we're, we're not short on information like the world is full of knowledge it's about connecting knowledge and understanding knowledge more than it is about existing knowledge you know if you if you spent enough time you could learn everything because it's all that it's all it all exists on the internet um so yeah, it's just, um, it's, yeah, it's promoting like a, a sustainable enterprise, which is why I look at it as, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm looking at the idea of a cooperative, something that was very close to my heart. It's actually a, yeah. invent, it invented in the same city as I, well, one of the main, one of the biggest cooperatives 
um, was invented in this and started in the city I live in. It's got a long social history here. And I do definitely identify with collective ownership and collective action and then collective reward for the collective yeah. Yeah. collective action. It's much more, it's a much more effective, it's not necessarily more effective, but it's much more fair. It's definitely more fair if people are re re rewarded for the work they're producing rather than rewarded 20% for the work they produce and somebody gets 40% for organizing it or starting it or yeah. they put the risk in at the beginning so they get paid forever for it. I'm like, you know, entrepreneurs are amazing people who have got like a high risk tolerance and a, and a willingness to try stuff. And obviously the washout rate is exceptionally high and I understand the risk reward mechanics. But yeah, it's just... um. It's just complicated, basically. Like so many things, it's just complicated. No, there, there are no simple black and white answers to these questions, really. And I mean, even, even with a cooperative model, if it works based on the market mechanism, uh, you still bump into the same impact problem, which is that if there are monetary incentives driving uh, the work, then uh, the stuff then, that makes money is going to make people more likely to do it, and the stuff that yeah, doesn't exactly, make money exactly. gets deprioritized. So, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so there needs to be some. If it's important for Corona, why there needs to be some mechanism that uh, that uh, ensures that the organization is focused on the important problems uh, at all at all times and. I have no idea how the hell to organize that, but that, but that's like that's that, welcome that needs to the questions to, I ask yeah. every day of yeah. myself and everyone yeah. around me. I'm like, <laughs> how do I focus this into something that's useful, and how do I just you know why is it useful, and who's deciding what's useful, and what biases are informing that decision of what's useful and can I offset them biases can I broaden the palette so I can make sure that I get points of view from people who live in Africa and points right. of view from people who live in Indonesia and points of view from people who live in China and yeah. I need as many as many perspectives as many points of view to make a more nuanced and multi-dimensionally mm -hmm. informed position rather than like hey white guy from Britain I'll solve all the problems. I'm like, yeah, I am not, I am not that person. <laughs> and I understand the flaws of that position. Now I don't want to be no white savior. I want to try and inform, I just want to try and people have come, yeah, build, build a collective intelligence and help people solve problems together. How we do that, that's, that's the big question. How do we make it sustainable? That's the next question. Because we're already doing the first one. We're already doing the work. Yes, it is absolutely, we're getting, we're given we're getting given resources yeah. because they're saying that we're what we're producing like the work is getting done we just need to work out how we can do that for more than just like yeah. a sprint you know yeah. in that sense yeah. 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 yeah and it's it's uh i think like what's interesting i i'm i mean if you look at like the basic motivation motivational literature uh i guess the kind of consensus right now is that when people are motivated weighted by uh, financial intensive incentives they uh, start lacking the kind of the intrinsic yep. motivation to it, do the work takes, better which it is, which the, is it, it literally yeah. de it demotivates people's yeah. intrinsic motivators yeah. yeah so so kind of a bit that's why i think like paying people i mean paying a monthly salary and kind of take the money off the table and then people can do their best work uh and kind of a that I think as a model works. And now, for example, for your organization, which is reminds a bit more uh, of, uh, of like, a, well, it's a kind of a community. It's, it could be, could operate in this type of like a contribute to a community and calculate every single bit of contribution. And suddenly if you actually do that, then you bump into this motivation problem and, and this sub optimization and calculating yeah. everything and all this friction that you start, actually... you start to get to basically like solicitor models where where you have to prove the amount of time you've put into it and if you're spending more yeah. of your time working about what you can build rather than what you're actually solving yeah. you're not doing you're not doing the solving you, yeah. you're spending part of your brain power solving how you're going to make money off of it not yeah. solving yeah. the actual problem yeah. so yeah i mean it's a it's a really how to how to retain the feeling of the gift economy and the intrinsic motivation while at the same time helping people uh, contribute 
on a like a scale from like full time to just uh, bits and pieces and and uh, and help people pay their pay their bills. That's I, I think that's kind of the optimization function that that uh, uh, or the, the, like the, the the outcome that you need to kind of uh, optimize. Yeah, for. I know it's it's um yeah. It is a, it's an optimization problem and a motivation problem and a economics problem and a societal trying to, you know, yeah. it's the difference. Between, it's trying to find that place where, yeah, people are turning up just because just they want to help. Because the last thing we want people is turning up just because they're going to be able to make money off of it because, yeah, you just end up with the wrong people then. No offense yeah. to the people who only enjoy making money, but they're not the people I want at all. I want the people who are willing to turn up to solve the problems for their own motivated reasons. But I, and, and there's always an element of um, selfishness in there. I completely ascribe to the idea that there's absolutely no one at all who is 100% altruistic. Like sure. there's, no such, there's no such thing as pure altruism. It's completely a lie. Because even if, some, even if the altruism exists, some of the altruism exists because it makes you feel good. Sure. Which is a self, which yeah. is a selfish thing, yeah. and some some of the altruism exists because you might learn something more from it, or some of the altruism yeah. exists so you can say, oh, "I've contributed to this project and I did exactly. this, and I've as proof of evidence of been work, doing work." Like all of these yeah. things have value, and because they have personal value, there's an element of selfishness to it. But what I want to do, and what Corona Y wants to do, is try and oh, I align as much of these self mildly selfish altruistic motives yeah. into a sustainable altruistic organization trying to solve problems yeah, yeah. and how to how to, how we can leverage the value of them things into a sense that but then we still need to work out how we're going to get paid bills of people can you know but people's bills are going to get paid and yes it's nice that if people do it on a side you know as a, as a hobby quote unquote you know something as a side interest or is something that they feel like they contribute in much the same way that people go to local community centers and help out yeah. or people go to you know sit in with old people and 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 and, and do like social like social connection sure. stuff like so all of these people on, exist but it's like how do we make it live past yeah and it depends on the ambition level i mean if you're really going to do good work uh you need people who think about these problems when they are in the shower and when they're driving yeah. their cars and when they're like like People that think about solving these problems all the time, oh, and you need those. Other, otherwise, you won't do good work. That's just that's just how it is. Yeah, you, you need to. Yeah, you need to get the people who are like, who enjoy the hard problems and, yeah. and think about the hard problems, and they think about the hard problems. Like you say, not because they could somehow get glory and a Nobel Prize for it, just because they don't like that the problem exists and they want yeah. to solve it. Although, exactly. they, even if it, you know, it's that um, it's the difference between like we're kind of in a place where there's an element of movement building like political movement but not necessarily political and there's an element of like community center idea so there's like an element of localization an element of national thinking and an element of like global consciousness and some of that's like movement making movement building in the same way and some of it is building a comp company in like an organization yeah. Yeah. and it's just like got little bits of many different human patterns i mean i, I look at corona why is the start of a city or is that like mm -hmm. a town because mm -hmm. you can't i mean we've said it before you, you can't kill a city no matter how hard you try you can't kill a city because a city's built on people and if people still hang out there and they still spend time there and they still want to develop and, and invest in that space it's going to be there people have like literally cities have been nuked and they still exist because right. people decided to still live there and still build there and still spend their social and human time there. Yeah. yeah. And Corona Y is like a town right now or a I village, like like a, la it. a large village where the, I want it to be that technically in fifth, no, not in, in like in a theoretical, like internet terms in 50 years where no one is the same people there, but it could still exist because yeah. the people who have turned yeah. up, who have absorbed the ethos and absorbed the idea, which is a little bit like a company as well. Companies can live for way longer than the original build, builder because they yeah. set out the parameters of what defines it as a, as a space and what the people who are part of it. And also is agile and movable enough that the people who are part of it 
affect it because a city mm -hmm. 50 years in the future is not the city the same city as it is now not only because the population is different but because the motivations of the population is different the interest of the population is different the the, the it's an organic connection between a space where people gather and the people who live there it's like it's that constant ev ev evolution process yeah. and yeah. i definitely and, and that's the only thing that's sustainable is like how we can work out a movement build and build a city and build a company in the same space in the same kind of ethos of all of it like take the best bits of all of them and change the world so i'm not asking for much but just like the just yeah. you know and i'm not i'm not trying to change the world I want everyone else who's smarter than me to change the world. I just want to be in the conversation occasionally and chime in. Well, and we're, we're, that's all we're, all, we're all enablers to each other, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I love the CD analogy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, it depends on, I mean, the, the incentive problem is one thing you, you want to see solved. And then what I'm kind of thinking, but think of kind of coming back to the, like the the pos potential relationship between Corona Y and Mattermore. I mean, how I see my s how I how I, how I think I see it is it's like a maybe like a map of the city in a way. You know, like a like helping people figure out what's where and uh, what can be done. I mean, if I'm going to go to that market square over there, what what can I do there? You know, yeah, and and yeah. I, I understand that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a fairly good way of it. I mean, we're trying to map it ourselves right now. Um, and the difference is, is why, why, would, why would an organization require another organization to be the mappers? And, it, and then, then this, this starts to be where the idea of, of subsuming starts to be yeah, coming. Yeah. It's like, does Matamor just become part of Corona Y with extra interest? Or does Corona Y become a subsection of Matamor? And obviously to a certain extent we both kind of want our one to be the one that takes the other one over and it's not about like damaging either each other it's about it's about putting them together but the problem is is the economic rub between your not not saying you you seem like a decent guy not absolutely not saying anything that's intrinsically bad with your motivations but you want to own matter more I don't know how sure. you want to distribute the wealth of it. I don't, I, that's not a question. I don't know that. I don't want to own Corona Y. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'd like to be able to say that I helped build it, but I don't want to own it. I don't want to get rich off of it. I'd rather, I'd rather get, I'd rather be comfortable and really solving the problem than rich and part of the problem. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, and it's, and, and don't get me wrong. I'd like to be rich. It'd be nice, but not because of the money, but because of the freedom to choose to do what yeah. I want to do. Yeah. If I could work out how to choose to do what I want to do and keep doing that and still be financially comfortable, that's fine. I've got yeah. no income. And I, and I, and I just, I, I mean, I, I told my mum when I was a kid, I was six, five, six or seven, five, five, six. And I said, I was going to be really rich and build her a mansion. So I've always had that sort of, Big, big picture thinking, I'm going to look after, but, I, but, but the idea behind that tells me I, that I wanted to look after people. Mm. I wanted to get rich, not because I wanted to get rich. I wanted to get rich to solve other people and people I obviously cared about. I don't think that ever went. I still have that. Um, I still have that intrinsic, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, w I want to succeed f because I want to help other people. And I'm thinking you do the same because it strikes me as you, at yeah. one point you were succeeding on your own and you were making money. And but then you were like, you've had that moment was like, am I actually solving real problems or am I just extracting money out of easy money? Am I, am I solving real problems or am I just solving small problems because they make me money? And I've never really been interested in solving small problems. They just don't interest me because they're just it's too simplistic and they don't motivate me because I'm, I'm like... I'm smart enough to have probably done many different things, but if I was only interested in money, I'd have gone and made a lot of money. But sure. it, and it won't, it just never been a motivator for me. So it's just that real balancing that's but I know I need to make money to be able to, you know, survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a requirement in the society we live in. But I kind of like the idea of building more of an egalitarian city of looking yeah. after each other and looking out for each other and connecting people. And it's just that how the hell can I build that in a society where money and power and influence still do not want that and how right. do i do it in a way that's politically 
it's apolitical while still being political because there's nothing that's not political at all. Right. I mean, it's we're not going to be campaigning on. Well, I don't think I'm still going to campaign, but in, you know, the, collectively we wouldn't because the part of the problem is is we're different. We're, you know, we've got people from all over the world with all sorts of different points of view and all sorts of different perspectives, and that's the point of it. The point yeah. is, is we're not all the same. The point is we discuss the things that make us different and we find interesting crossovers and interesting solutions. I don't want to be in a big bubble of my own like mind. I don't want to be singing with all the same choir because that never challenges my thoughts. That never improves my understanding. That never makes me question things. If I'm only surrounded by things that I already agree with, I'm, it's, no one's learning. Uh, it's just... Yeah. What what can we do? What can we do? How do we work this? How do we how do you crack this nut? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I I really don't know. I think like uh, I mean yeah. I think I think like I, I mean you're you're probably I think you're you're exploring all the right things right now, and it's uh, it's a. Uh, and you need to make some decisions that have trade-offs and, uh, and then the problem is that the the problem is, is unlike your scenario where there's two of you on it or three, you or however many people who are like the founders and nothing else, even if you're the ones putting the money in right now, you own it. So you get to decide no one owns Corona. Why? Like yeah. Arthur's got a little bit of money in it in the sense that he's been funding a little bit of the, sure. the tools but even he doesn't technically own it because there's nothing to own because yeah. everything we've built is open source and collectively made. Yeah. There's no, the only thing we own right now is a concept of how to build a community yeah. in a way that's not yeah. like anyone else. And that's all we technically, and even then you don't own it because it's only a side effect of a, a set of parameters that we tested and we're experimenting every day and every, in every possible way. So that's one thing that scares me in the sense that somebody else could just make a similar sort of thing and completely replace us. But at the same time, if it, if it was better, I, that'd be, I'd be aggrieved to feel like I couldn't take part. I mean, I went from being just like anyone else at Corona Y. I just joined up. I joined up, yeah. solved problems, tried to help solve them. There's no, there's, I'm not, I have no more influence or um, ownership or like my my position at the table is is equal in the sense, mm -hmm. but my the only difference is is I put more time into it. I put yeah. more time into it, and I put more mental energy into it. And I'm not saying loads of people are not putting loads of mental energy. I'm I'm seeing what people are making. There's extremely smart people making extremely clever things to the point where I don't even understand what they're making. Um, it's not that I'm doing more work than anyone else. I'm just more vocal. I think I'm more vocal, and I'm more thinking about like organizational questions rather than like which version of an AI no, no, question. That, I, and I think it's, it's, it's really, I mean, that is needed as well. And uh, mm -hmm. kind of a, how to organize, I mean, you have the benefit of being and operating as a swarm. And that's, that's kind of something that nobody can kind of take away from you. I mean, even if somebody copied all the code uh, and started kind of building on top of that, that kind of themselves, what they can't do is, is take the culture and take the people and, and all of that. I think the, the challenge is like how to retain that swarm like uh, aspects of Corona Y while at the same time bring just enough structure to kind of dance at the edge of chaos and, uh, yeah. and, and help dance people. at the edge of chaos yeah. is exactly it. It's like, how can we control enough chaos to not stop it being the magic of the chaos yeah but exactly also, but also enough of a stability that it's not it, it just only lasts for you know yeah a swarm of a swarm of bees can swarm but they don't swarm indefinitely yeah. they'll swarm yeah. and then they'll go somewhere else and it already some corona well, that's already happening with corona Y. but the idea is we need to make it so more people come in and then people leave and more people come in and people leave and and it's just this constant fluctuation but the side effect of that constant fluctuation is we need to have a decent management system that yeah. can pass knowledge onto this you know passing the batter on it's the idea we've talked about like it's a relay 
and no one, not everyone's going to be here the whole time, but if they can contribute and add something to the collective intelligence, put some effort in, build some tools, whatever, pass the baton on. There we go. Right. You, I've got this far. This is what it is. This is how it works. Yeah. Have yeah. fun working out the next step because I got to go do something else somewhere else or my life is not conducive to fit in the amount of yeah. effort I'm putting yeah. into this. Yeah. And then I'll be back in two months when I've got time again and, and you can pass the baton back or I can slide into a different space or into a different team or I can move between two teams. I can like, well, I've, I've, I've felt like I've contributed and learned from what I wanted here, but now I'll actually that problem over there is really interesting. So I'm going to, I'm going to go over there. So here you go. You can run this bit. I'll go over there and work on that bit. And it's exactly. like, that's why I said it. And knowledge management is literally for me, the biggest problem because knowledge management is the only thing that's going to make Corona Y sustainable. And yeah, how to work yeah. out that knowledge yeah. management problem is the solving of the sustainability of the intellectual part of Corona Y, not the financial part of Corona Y, because obviously the intellectual is how persistence works. You know, the the reason why society got to where it did is because it started to write down in things in books. So one generation could learn from the previous generation. We want to have generations of Corona Y people learning from the previous generations of people who were there and having it all stored. And that's the tough bit. Yeah, and if you can solve the financial problem, you have, you can retain people longer, and then you need to have less. I mean, you turnover. have the, that. Yeah, you have less turnover, and you have the, the this problem of kind of turning in, the interest, intrinsic into or like passive knowledge into explicit knowledge, and suddenly not that big of a problem anymore, because now now people can actually onboard other people and it's it doesn't need to be kind of a mediated by some you know google docs and and some other tools yeah the i mean the problem is is like the 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 storage of knowledge is the is the most efficient asynchronous way of passing information because then people can read it when they're ready and consume it and read the links and and can yeah. spend a couple of hours on their own working through it and solving the problems and then yeah. come to someone with questions but i have found the fastest way i can give people the fastest way that people get orientated with corona why is this conversation it's like yeah. in 20 in 25 minutes i can tell one person i can cover what the organization is doing where it's involved what different projects are what exactly. the different projects are who to speak to about different projects because i can only give you an overview of it Go speak to that person. I can in in twenty minutes. I can give I can give a an introduction yeah. to yeah. what I know about Corona Y right now, but that means that one person. It's a one on one discussion point, and if you have mm-hmm. fifty people, you can't one on one twenty minutes. Sure. Or you just you'd be doing nothing but transferring information all day long, and that's where the asynchronous versus the synchronization kind of comes into it, yeah. and and also the persistence of knowledge. Because then, what happens if the person who's doing all that Guess it by a bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, that's. That, I I think like well, the, the, there were many reasons, but I I do believe in this like uh, organ organizing into teams and and like teams of teams that can can uh, can help these teams organize. I I do believe kind of operating in in small teams is it's simple enough for people to actually do yeah. the work. I mean, you and, have and just you can go like there's Yeah. There's five people around you. Yeah, you exactly. Can, well, he's doing that bit and she's doing this bit and that doing, and, and, and that yeah. person's thinking about the next steps we need to do. It's like that five people, I can get to know five people. I can trust that they, yeah. if they say they're going to do yeah. something, they're going to do it. Um, yeah. And then you, like have, said, then you have, need to have some interface between the teams. That, and, and, but, but I do believe in that type of, because the, the alternative is, is turning like organization into these different functions, all these and hierarchies and all that. But I, I'm, that's, I think that's a terrible approach if we think about uh, kind of the modern world and especially if we think about Corona Y, it's, a, it's an especially a, a, a kind of really terrible approach for you guys. Uh, but um, but uh, to operate in this like uh, teams and, and then figuring out ways how these teams could interact with each other, I do believe that's, a really interesting way to explore because then the knowledge man part of the knowledge management as well it it's in the team the team knows yeah. what's going on and 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 even like somebody somebody gets under the bus i mean there's 
there's always four more people that can share a lot of that tacit knowledge that exists in the team. Yeah. And, and then they can, and then the, the advantage of small teams is they they start to write explicit knowledge just to inform each other of what they've done. And yeah. that small, their small target audience, the paradox of specificity, the only people they're targeting right now is the four other people that they're working on the task with. Yeah. But the idea is if somebody else could walk into it and still read all of it and go, I understand yeah. what you're doing. I, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in joining in. We'll make this a team of six. I'm going to also help that one person because that one person is doing something that's actually more than that one person has time for. Exactly. So we have two people solving that part of the problem and then two becomes four, four becomes, you know, and then it does grow. And then eventually a whole little team grows off of a team because again, it gets to a point where like, oh, well, this team's like 20 people, 25 yeah. people now and four of them are doing the same sort of thing. Well, then in four sort of, start to coalesce right. as a sub team doing they discuss the little intricacies of that particular part of the problem and then they document and they build it up and then they transfer that information into the next hub and then that hub transfers into the bigger team and then the bigger team transfers it into the general knowledge of the population of the, you know of the organization it's, it's how it's how humans work it's literally as that, organic as how that. humans work it's like villages become towns towns become cities cities become city states city states become multiple city states multiple city states become nations nations become conglomerations of nations and into into you know you've got european unions or you've got you know collection of nations all discuss it and then we're kind of at the stage where really we're at a global level now we are we are we're not we're not all admitting it yet but global intelligence global global impact is the only way we're going to solve global problems you know no one nation yep. is going to solve you know climate change yep. no no yep. one nation could not even if they were the most perfect nation in the world solving all as you know not even if not even if america and china were the were like the two biggest economies on the planet if they put everything on hold and only concentrate on, on it they still won't solve it by themselves the two biggest they couldn't even if nobody else joined in they won't do it yeah. so we're only going to solve big problems with collective ownership and the collective Agreed. ownership Agreed. is uh, is messy and it's democratic and it's frustrating and complicated. Why can't it just be simple? <laughs> yeah. I, do, I, do, I have laughed and joked more than once that I said, just give me absolute benevolent dictator powers for 10 years and I'd solve a lot of problems. If you just give me all of the power for 10 years, lots of problems will disappear, but also flawed human being. So I'm not yeah. actually going to get it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To, to make perfect decisions, you need to have perfect uh, information. So it's... Uh, we don't have that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We don't have, have that. Oh man. All we can yeah. do is trust. All we can do is yeah. trust other people to do the right thing and build systems that promote yeah. trustworthy yeah. and trust is built by transparency. Transparency is up by openness and honesty. Honesty is built by, you know, all them kind of men. So trust and transparency is paramount. And that's one of the reasons why silly things like recorded conversations, I, you know, if someone else can come back and tell me I've said something wrong or they are, yeah. Sometimes I say things that are smart and I don't even realize I do it. So, so and, and I, I consume a lot of the, the, the videos that we put up and I'm like, wow, that was a really interesting conversation between them three people. I really wish I was there, but also that was a really interesting conversation. And that's all I want is more interesting conversations with smart people trying to solve real problems and doing it in a way that's like hopeful rather than pessimistic. Right. right. Yeah. How do we move forward? Uh, next steps. I'm never good at next steps. <laughs> this is glitch. I'm very, very good at talking. I am not very good at making plans or solving problems. I am very good at talking a good game, delivering a good game. Ah, questions. Um, next steps. Well, I'm going to, I'm obviously going to put this hour long conversation on. I'll share it in our community engagement team, which is yep. kind of my team. Um, community engagement is kind of the HR meets communication meets a little bit of organizational discussion. And obviously we have our operations team as well, which is kind yeah. of the same thing. We end up with a lot of redundancy in Corona Y. Lots of similar teams doing sim well, lots of 
the same group of people, slightly different, doing slightly, di- you know, discussing it across a number of places. It's one of the reasons why it's really confusing to be in so many places, mm-hmm. but also it's the only way you can ever know what's going on. And it's really confusing. It's worse when you, you're in so many places and someone comes up with like a discussion that's happened somewhere outside of your view because there happened to be in a place that you've not seen. I'm like, I can see 98% of Corona wine. It's always really weird when there's that 2% turns up. I'm like, where have you guys been? What is this? <laughs> what? Where have you? Which which corner have you been hiding in? And you've made a really interesting thing. When did this happen? How did how did I not even know about this? It's yeah. And I'm not the only one who's like that. But I'm just I'm just I just love consuming information and trying to understand things. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm I'm just constantly lost basically. So I'm just constantly trying to be less lost. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Next, it's a, next, it's a, it's probably never ending work. I would I would guess. Yeah. So next steps, I'm, I'll share it in the community group. Um, where do you feel now you've kind of got a bit more of the ethos and you got some of the ethos, but you got, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I am not the only person who decides on the ethos of the organization, obviously, yeah. but I'd like to think I'm one of the people who is pro- promoting the ethos that is already existing and building. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what you said is, uh, well, definitely. I mean, it's it's given me like more, like a better picture. But it's it's all aligned with everything else I've heard thus far. So it's, uh, I think, like uh, I do, I do feel I do feel that I have a kind of a good picture of the ethos. Also, like the like major challenges regarding your like uh, how to organize and how to build this for the long term. Um, I I guess kind of a thought that I. I would like to leave you with is of thinking matter more as like, I mean, as one tool among others, I mean like LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. So it's kind of like, uh, or Google docs for that matter. So like, uh, like something that could be leveraged for the benefit of the organization, but, definitely like it's a it's a tool among others and uh, and, and i i really want to be kind of super clear about that because we that's kind of our intention is to build a place where people can share to the outside world what they are working on and what they need so that this like a, even organizations even like a like at, i would imagine like in like 10 years even like ibm or some other big conglomerate would share some of the work that's happening within uh within uh the organization on matter more so that people could actually they wouldn't see just the front of ibm but they would actually see the teams working on different really exciting stuff and and people could kind of connect to that uh to that team and maybe share something that would uh would help the team uh while the company works on its own and uh and uh and kind of retains the culture and and the organization model that they have so yeah that's a it's an interesting thought experiment of where to where you where you it's nice to see where you think it could be in 10 years time so you think it is definitely like a platform that you're looking at building yeah. a, a platform tool in much the same way that facebook or Facebook's probably a better example than Twitter. I think Twitter's probably. got limitations. Twitter is more of a direct discussion tool. So yep. it's more because Facebook has has more tools in its bag, for lack of a better word. And LinkedIn has yeah groups and it has com- company profiles and it's got personal profiles. So LinkedIn's also another platform that's yeah. How do you perceive it being sustainable on your side? that that we keep it sustainable uh yeah. well so you said earlier on you, you were thinking of like a freemium model so part yeah. free yeah. part some premium options or um like i say a bounty system exactly exactly so those those are the two options and kind of a, in the short term we are uh probably i mean the timing is still uh, not clear, but we will be raising some funding. I mean, from probably from the Finnish uh, government, plus maybe putting some of our own, or maybe taking a, an external investor and kind of a funding growth until we kind of uh, 
get to a like a critical critical point master where system can, yeah, exactly. yeah um is it i mean you it's finnish so it's it's obviously going to be based on finnish companies initially because they'll be the first buy in somewhat or is it is it no 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 that's absolutely uh uh I, I, my guess is like like absolutely nothing to do with finland for a long time so so it's like it's only we're, a we're, tiny we're, population is finland is what six million people it's pretty yeah small. not even not even that but it's 5.6 so so uh so yeah i mean it's uh yeah so so why why take a, like a random 5.6 million population from from the world and focus on that we're not going to focus on finland we're going to focus on on we have a global perspective we're going to focus on uh more on like data driven projects in the first but but uh remembering that many of i mean for example like many different ai projects they have a really big need to have people that can actually provide the data implement solutions provide uh, a better understanding of the problem so we need more people yeah i am um, like i am for example i am starting to notice that i mean I've I've understood a little bit of data science from periphery from a for a little while because again I'm like geek adjacent. I like understanding what people are making and and honestly I've read that much math stuff in the last few months just to try and get a better idea of of the of the complexity of like the the way AI is looked at right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it seems like the data AI space is growing at a rate that's could only be described as exponential. And it's because people are starting to realize how it can be used, how it can be utilized, what places it can be used, and also places like us where we're experimenting using. Because in some ways, Corona White isn't really um, making anything new. Like, it's not invented a new technology. It's mixing lots and lots of existing small bits of technology into a multidimensional yeah. tool with ideally a front end that makes it accessible and usable. That's kind of what we're building right now. So as is like infrastructure and a front end, but um, I'm assuming that yours as a platform shouldn't be too data or te- technologically expensive to run in the sense that you're not going to be ingesting massive amounts of data. It is going to be a, a lack of a better word, a social media platform. It's yeah. going to be a social media platform with a focused social media direction but it is going to be a social media platform in a sense that it will be social socially connecting and almost yes. a, a job board not necessarily a job board but if you simple i've had it into us into like a project board these are projects yeah. that we know are going on these are the sub projects within them the you know if you want to because there's loads of them sort of stuff existing now there's loads of like people who are just making I've obviously I've spent a lot of time now. I've spent the last few months just wandering around the internet looking at weird weird and wonderful bits of the internet I've never mm-hmm. seen before because because I've now been somebody links something in Slack and I'm like, oh what's that? And then I'm off off yeah. down a rabbit hole of its own direction. Um what makes you feel like your platform will stand up compared to anybody else who tries the same thing? Well, I think I think uh I mean, I guess what we are betting on is the idea of like teams and projects being the main driver in in the ec- economy and in, in the kind of the future of work in, in the future. I mean, it's really about making the best product being right about that bet and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and building the critical mass. I mean, network effects, obviously, for these network effects are, yeah. are, are uh, the, the major, major thing there. So in, in that sense, um, you, you have, you, you have to requ- obviously require a critical mass, a critical buy-in from people who are doing these kind of lots of different projects or similar projects. Ideally, I am assuming you're going to be looking towards the more complex and the more global problems rather than just like help me build this new game. It's like, that's cute, no, it's, but the focus yeah. is on absolutely like 100% on, on like this big global challenges. And, and we, I mean, things that we ha- don't have on the platform and uh, yet, I mean, the product and things that we want to figure out a way to kind of incorporate is, is the idea of how do we connect this individual projects and teams into a kind of 
into like a bigger picture of where are the challenges. I mean, if you, for example, if you think of climate change, you, you can say like, where are the emissions in the world? Because it's and CO2, like it's a physical molecule. So where does it get emitted? And what can we do about it? Who's working on, yeah. on that specific energy, resource? Yeah, energy, yeah. energy production, agriculture, exactly. transportation. transportation. How, do we, how, are, how are them three things, how are them in three industries changing? Okay, these are the movers and shakers in global yeah. energy supply. These are the ones that are pushing into the new energy markets or into, into renewable. You, you know, these are... These are these are agricultural programs and agricultural systems and and yeah, it's like a group of well, it's a system of systems. It's all system theory. It's all system theory. It's all systems yep. on top of systems. It is. Um, so I'm just yeah, I'm just I, I, I like what you're thinking. I do, and I like the fact that you're thinking in that way because obviously more people thinking in that way is going to get us more problems solved. I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, because network effects are like really complicated because it's group psychology which is <laughs> yep. very very unpredictable um and yeah i just I, I, there's just a lot i think it's just one of them spaces that's like there's it, it it doesn't lean towards um centralization very well i don't feel because people are cynical towards centralization. They're cynical towards anything that's a one thing for everything or, for, yeah. or this one thing in that space. I mean, to the point where like Facebook is, is, a, is looked at its, by its own, you know, it's very good at what it does, but also it's a, it gets a lot of cynicism now because of its, sure. the, way, the way it's built its platform and the way it's, and, and it's like one of those, it's a, what's the word for it it's um, a victim of its own success basically sure and yeah. there are yeah and and the difference is, is facebook is kind of like general purpose twitter is kind of conversational linkedin is more professional yeah. and i definitely understand the whole like projects because that because it goes to like a little bit like a change that kind of leans towards the changing the uh the job economy and the 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 the, the, the destabilization of the job yeah. job market in the sense that less less and less people work for one company for 25 years and more exactly. and more people more and more people have like three or four projects going on at once or i work for this place but i'm also you know side hustles and whatever just people describe it as you know fiverr and all these other little platforms where people can do little bits of work for a little bit of money um and then obviously there's the there's the intrinsic motivation factor that starting to, people are starting to become more globally conscious, more globally exactly. aware and the more globally conscious and more globally aware are starting to look at, you know, look, you know, being part of their political party that, you know, being part of their social, you know, they, they look at it in local level to try and implement larger change or they look on a, they look online for organizations and groups that are doing things. So it's definitely becoming, it's a, the world is leaning this way. Um, obviously because I, I'm here and I'm a product of very much like anybody else looking at the world going, mm -hmm. just, we've got to improve this. We've got to get it right. And we've got to, we've got, we've got a kind of a time limit on it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm trying to understand I'm trying to understand your motivations and your big picture because yeah, yeah I'm just, cause I, I'm, I, I'm not wishing you to succeed or fail in any way, shape, or form. I'm just trying to. No, I, judge, I completely judge the judge the feasibility of it. You yeah, know. absolutely. Yeah. 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 I don't know. My brain runs runs off and does its own thing. Sometimes, sometimes I get distracted by my own thoughts. Um. Next, I don't think I don't know. I've got for next steps. To be honest, I, um, I'll share this against the group. Okay. Um. I'll see if at some point I can make some notes on it because. I hate doing that. I hate it. I hate writing down things, having to not make loads of notes. But I come. I, come, I much more prefer discussions than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you do you think kind of that uh, that impromptu global call would still make sense at like uh, like uh, somewhere next week or? Um. Um. What should we do? How should we do it? Should we spin off another channel to discussion it? I mean, you can, you can, there's a channel called partnerships. Mm -hmm. 
so you could always i mean i've posted it in community engagement which is a private channel but um you could definitely share it in partnerships and i'll tag people who might be interested in it and i'll tag this conversation in it as well and people then can, can consume it on their own interest right. and if we give yeah like a week or so for people to consume and then make you know there might be a conversation thread afterwards um what if corona why was part of your your network what would be the costs of that sort of thing um Honestly, I think, I think right now we are, I mean, I know that you are operating on a tight budget as well. And, and I, I guess what we're really looking for is, is a partner with whom we could like uh, co-create the critical things that it could support your, your work. And, uh, and kind of that time investment is already, I think, I think, uh, major part if there is a i mean a, like an actual cost component we could we could discuss that later i mean it's it's not going to be uh anyway it's not going to be huge i think i think we we haven't really thought about it so it's kind of a, I'm, I'm i'm thinking like i said we're, we're trying to figure out where we could be most beneficial right now where we could make most impact and, and it's it's really not a question i have been uh that's that, that that's that's kind of a, as good an answer as I can get right now. And it's like I have no idea, and we <laughs> are, don't know. We will have to work that out later. That's pretty much my answer to everything with Corona. Why it's like, uh, leave it with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me, yeah. Let me think on it and discuss on it. And um. <laughs> Because the last thing I want to do for Corona Y is sign us because it's one of the reasons we're like we're moving like even Slack. We love Slack. It's great. It does its job really well. But at some point, Slack is going to cost Corona Y a, a lot. lot, a yeah, lot of money, I know. a lot and lot of lot of money, and it's money we don't have. And, yeah. Um, no, it's going to be like it's going to be like a hundred thousand a year or something like that. Fairly. I mean, it depends how big the community. Yeah. yeah, it depends how big the community. Yeah, but it's. I mean, like, even right now, the community is a little on the quiet side. And yeah, you're talking. 15 to 20,000 pounds a year just yeah. for the tool that we talk on, which is expensive. I mean, I, I'm, and I understand Slack has costs and, you know, they're hosting things sure. and they've got, you know, okay, it's not that I pretend like the costs don't exist, but we need to work out how to, I'm just trying to work out how to plan for a future that, is as financially stable as possible. So if if and when there is money in Corona Y from either partnerships mm. or government funds or or even I mean we've even discussed the idea of like most of Corona Y would be well Corona Y would be collectively a non profit, but we it doesn't mean we can't do profit making parts right to pay for the whole enterprise to work. So the more we can reduce costs and not sign ourselves up to as you know because i mean like we've looked at a few knowledge management systems you know we had like get guru we had calls with them we've had calls with a couple of other different knowledge management type systems mm -hmm. and they, they look great they do they absolutely look great and they're like oh well, well we'll give you this and that and and it's like yeah that that like when they go well you, you can give it you know until september you can have it for free and i'm like yeah i don't want to spend two months of two months of facilitating and building all our community knowledge and all of our knowledge management onto one platform yeah. to then have the rug pulled out from underneath us in January next year when the company goes, actually, it's not like $3 a person now, it's like seven. And you're like, you just literally doubled my cost for something that now not only, no, you, you're basically making me need it because before I didn't need it and now I need it and now you're charging me more. And I'm like, that's uh and I, I get no, that, 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 that's got, it goes back to the idea that um, absolutely businesses need to make money to be sustainable. But um, I'm just kind of hoping that we can build, like if we can become an official nonprofit, like a designated nonprofit, then we could maybe get a little bit of leeway on yeah as much of the tools and technology we need to make this community work and produce the things that we're already producing. Because yeah. 
And when 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 you when you see when you see calls or you're part of calls with like full time researchers in you know big research institutes in the in the world, and they go, if you build build the tool, you're basically building. If it and if it's built right, you're going to change science forever. And when yeah. someone says that, you're like. Yeah, we are trying to do something that's good here. We're trying mm. to do something that's big and complicated and, and noble. Mm. Uh, and we need, I need to work out how to get to the, that making this whole solution as financially viable as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And then beyond that solution, when we go, well, we've, we've, we've solved that problem, we will improve that and have that project ongoing to improve it. But now, where do we pivot to? What's the next problem we're going to solve how can we improve that problem how can we solve that next one i mean when we're talking about a knowledge discovery engine it's just like the level the layer the levels of work and the level of complexity involved in that sort of knowledge system i mean i'm only just starting to understand like knowledge graphs as a concept i understood them as a concept like intellectually but now i'm starting to understand them a bit more as like the technical problems of them Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, like people have been trying to solve this problem for 200 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's like people have been trying to solve, like, how do I organize knowledge and how do I make sure knowledge is searchable? Like libra- libraries have been like tra- tra- challenged with this problem for a long time. And not only are we trying to make a library, we're trying to make a library where all the books are talking to each other at the same time. And it's like, <laughs> is, is it even possible? Uh, I don't know. And I mean, it's yeah. theoretically possible, but can we get enough people who are going to put enough expertise into it to make it collective? And Wikipedia is a prime example, but Wikipedia is still like struggles, still struggles yeah. financially, still has a, it's an absolutely amazing noble goal, but it's still like stresses them. I'm sure there's people who sit up at night going, what happens if we don't get enough funding this month? It's like, nobody wants to think about that yeah. as an idea. And I don't really want to think about that as an idea, but, um, and I'm just not qualified for it. I think that's part of it as well. As like, I, like everyone here, I'm just like, I am not qualified to think about these really big problems. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to make as few missteps as possible or promote as few missteps that obviously the collective intelligence of the community can decide on. So things like, yeah. I don't want to tie myself. I don't want to tie us up in bills a year away if we struggle and, of get course. to a year away no, no, and then find certainly. out that we've got oh we've got we've got fifty thousand pounds over bills now and we need yeah. to work out how to spend all the revenue we've been earning to do good things to like yeah. just just to continue to exist yeah yeah no it makes sense makes sense and uh and i think like well the, can, if we think about like uh the just like the tooling perspective i i do believe you need something like slack i mean discord is maybe the only fair alternative that that you might kind of uh, play with uh it's cheaper yeah, I, than I'm... slack it's uh uh i mean i mean slack is excellent for this like fast-paced communication right and and kind of sending direct messages having group chats what, what it's terrible at is is uh helping people navigate an, a bigger organization or like a like a set of different teams and channels and and all that yeah uh, it doesn't so, it's it is really a one team organized thing it's good for yeah. like a team up to a limit but yeah it's not it's not built for a it's not built for a movement it's not no it's no not. it's not no it's 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 really not. but i think something like a movement needs something like slack plus a way to like uh, yeah, we're, filter, we've been look, filter the right we've been looking at yeah. yeah, we've been looking at Matrix as a communication tool because it's an open source platform. It's not a platform actually. It's an open mm. source. Disc, it's an open source protocol, and there are a number of like tools that can access the Matrix network. And it's open source, so it's less likely to be costly. Mm. If we can put it on our infrastructure and then have a really easy access to it, it could be an option. Um, but again, like anything open source, it's just it's just clunkier, or it's just like slightly more complicated, or you have, to, yep. and that's kind of like open source is never as shiny as as closed source or proprietary, um, and that's kind of the 
the balance. It's like, do we just want to be as easy as possible but pay for the premium, or do we want to be a little bit tougher to understand everything but have bills that are next to nothing? So anything that is made can either be distributed with the community who's made it or can then be focused into actually it can be used on the processing power of the AI tools that are building this really clever stuff. Because that's kind of our biggest cost right now is our processing power. Right. Like it's yeah. like it yeah. is a lot. It is a, a hell of a lot. I mean, like outside of Slack, which we're not paying for right now, obviously, because we've been given it. But outside of Slack, my understanding is things like Google credits and Amazon Cloud credits are our biggest lump of money that gets used yeah. up. But again, yeah. we got given them. So if we could just keep, if they could just be good enough to keep giving us credits. But again, I just, um, you, you can't, you can't build your house on hope and, uh, and, and goodwill. You just, no, it's, no. it's just, you can't, you can't, you, I've got to try and make it. I, well, I don't personally, but I've taken it upon myself to think about these things that I, I want to make it as physic you know, physically stable and, stab- and supportable in the long term. Cause silly things like, Maybe having a subscription or a Patreon or people who want to support us or I don't know, there's a thousand different ways we could bring some money in, but we need to make sure that people feel like they're getting something from it or or we're having a, you know, we need to show what we're doing and that comes back down to knowledge management and impact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's there's lots of problems that kind of feed themselves from and you've got to try and work out how to break that cycle. <laughs> oh... Anyway, this has gone way longer than I expected, but... Yeah, like, likewise, but it's been a good conversation. Um, I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna tap out now because I've got a call cool. in an hour. I've got yep. a call in an hour with a, a lawyer, so... Okay. Um, so, partnerships, drop into there. Uh-huh. Put your pitch, for lack of a better word. I'll, yep. I will put, I'll put this up next to it um, because I can't decide. It's not my job to decide. I can, sure. I, can, I can be part of the persuasion for or against, but I definitely am not the person who goes, yes, we all definitely do this, or yes, we definitely will. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Because part, part of it is, is like, if there was a way of like signing on to one thing and it was on both, it, because anything that's a barrier is going to reduce people turning up. Uh-huh. That's where anything that's a, a hurdle that takes, you know, oh, I have to sign up in one place. And then, oh, well, when you get onboarded, well, if you sign up to this website, this is where our job boards hold. It's like some people are just not going to do that. So, yeah, and I, 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 yeah, I think, I think those are, those are exactly the types of problems that we need to and figure Slack's out. Slack's the same sort of thing. Some people don't join Slack because yeah. either they don't want to, they don't know how to, they, there is a, there is a chunk of people who signed up through the website who never joined. Why yep. they never joined, I don't know. But there is always going to be like loss for every right. barrier. Right. Right. And I'm just, I want to just make it, I want to reduce the re- reduce it to be as easy as possible to a certain point for anyone to join in and be part of it. But yep. also realizing that the people who are, the people who do get through the barriers are often not necessarily the best, but the most motivated. The people, if you put a few barriers in front of people, they're more like the ones that get past it are already... They're already they're already bought in. They've already committed to going through the three or four little barriers. Yeah, and I, I mean I mean the thing is the thing is that we we can't just like solve I mean your problem. We need to solve the problems of the different teams working on, oh, yeah. on different parts of Corona Y. So so if, if we can do that, so if we can help them. I mean it, it access- might it might even be a case of yeah, it might even be a case of like individual teams might sign up to it as yeah. their space to work yeah. from and we'll experiment with it. That's normally yeah. how things yeah. work in here. It's like if, if, you know, VT team actually goes, actually, you know, one of the VT teams goes, actually it would be an interesting way of getting more, more help if yeah. we need to, or as a place, because like GitHub is starting to be a little bit of a storage of a knowledge repository for some people. And, and like we use Trello a lot and then Trello has kind of gone by the wayside and gets used a lot less now. And, um, yeah, there's just lots of moving parts and not all of them stay around. Yep, yep, I get it, I get it. So, yeah, put, I, I, like I, if a better word, put your pitch. Um, I will. I'll, and I'll put this conversation that we had that was like an hour and a half, so. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. I'm. I'm too. I'm too experienced at doing eight-hour conversations, so I'm really good at filling the air. Um, oh. I I used to, I game I game for a long time. I've gamed with a lot of streamers, so I can. You just, did what? You... Uh, for a, a long time, I've gamed with a lot of streamers, like full-time streamers, uh, and, and right. so so I'm kind of used to just like like one stream I got on a lot is twenty-four-seven. So there is no limit to how much we can talk. <laughs> yeah, I can oh, talk. Oh, that's a, can... that that's that's a great skill to have. <laughs> uh, it's not a great skill. It's really time-consuming and really distracting. It's trying to focus my mind is harder than my ability to talk. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, every every strength is a weakness, and and many many weaknesses are at the same time uh, on the flip side. They are strengths as well. So I mean, um, just... what you were talking about, Hyder, Hyde. Hy hi bird well, a company I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link cool i'll have a look into that as well yeah um thank you very much for your time thanks for answering my lots and lots and lots of questions i kind of i kind of grilled you a little bit but i think that's that's good i think uh yeah i just i want to know if we're going to partnership with someone i want to know why and of course yeah because you seem like you're trying to do good things and that's obviously something i want to promote but I want to make sure that them good things and like sustainable and fair and reasonable and yeah and aligns yeah. with with what you're Noble, doing yeah. and what 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 your organization and culture is all about. That's important. Yep. Um, it yeah. is absolutely important. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Likewise. Until, uh, until next time, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Ciao. Bye bye.